bit. <clears throat> I got up and I ate. I just finished eating my breakfast. Ugh. I don't like the way that I feel like I'm way too fat. <clears throat> oh my god, my arms. Ugh, all those locks. My head is soft. I don't know where to look. Do I look at this? Do I like this? Yeah, well, this is my weight, so, uh, so be it. This is how I eat. So I've got to go to the psychiatrist tomorrow. I've got to have my first appointment with the psychiatrist. So I'm nervous. <laughs> I don't know if I'll continue to see the psychiatrist, but I have to see, I have to find one of them. I also need to find a therapist. Yeah, I need to find a therapist who specializes in childhood, what is it, childhood trauma, adult survivors of childhood abuse and trauma. Um, I don't know, I feel very self-conscious. I feel like I'm putting on a mask. I'm hiding myself. Um, I don't know. I guess when I when you learn more and more about this whole personality issues, trauma issues, it's like I feel more and more and more like um, like the more I know, but the more I know myself. The more I want to, the more uncomfortable I feel talking about it. Because I feel like this is something, it's very personal about you and that you should uh, protect it or give it its due privacy. You know, not like this flaunted and be so exhibitionist about it. And, you know, um, <clears throat> anyway, so I'm also like a um, 17 year old, this whole self care thing and what I want to do in my life and, and all that. So uh, I spoke to my friend last Friday and Look, I've been I've been like seesaw, seesaw, seesaw over this thing for a long time. What I want to do is I'm just gonna put the application in for the admission, the legal profession admission board. It's like nine hundred dollars. So she's gonna write a character reference for me. I gave her the um, actually right here. This is my. This is my. I'm not gonna show. It. So it's like a. This is my disclosure. So I'm just gonna. I just gave her this to read. So I need my another character reference. So I want to just get my mom's friend who you know, she knew me when I was a kid. And she might write the second character reference. So I've got to do that tomorrow after the psychiatrist appointment. Uh, so I'm just, I want to, the plan is to send this application in next week, uh, next week, no, oh, Tuesday, 14th of June, because I checked, like, my last, uh, semester in 2011, started uh, on July 18, 2011, so... I still have that time, so I have to make it before July 18. So June 14th is the. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the city and submit my application in person. Uh, yes, nine hundred dollars, just a lot of money. But um, yeah, so I borrowed the money from my brother, who's been like very generous. So I don't know. I think he just wants me to. <laughs> get a job and leave so he can, uh, you know, 
he can live his like I mean he's gonna live his you know live his life anyway but uh, yeah so. <sighs> so anyway so I'm gonna have a link to a video by someone called Show Boundaries and she talks about like this codependence have a very hard time one of the reasons they engage in manipulative behavior is because they have a very hard time asking for other people to meet their needs verbally articulating it uh, because they don't feel like they are worthy enough so like like and I'll, I'll link to the video and I'll maybe link to the timestamp so like for me I've, 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 I mean I've, I should probably not talk about my mom because I need to respect her privacy, but, uh, you know, the, one of the reasons I, I tend to be manipulative, it's not like a, when I say manipulative, it's not like a malicious, evil manipulation, it's just a, it's just a coping mechanism because you, because you don't feel like you deserve your needs, like love, whatever it is, like as a child, maybe you never got it. So you, you engage in this manipulation of pleasing or whatever it is to get people to give you security or whatever, affection or whatnot. And also like maybe uh, for me personally, uh, you know, asking, telling people I have these needs is also like there's a lot of shame associated with it because it, it sort of makes you feel extremely weak and vulnerable. Like when you tell someone, hey, I have these needs and could you do something for me? Um, Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <sighs> that, that was my mom talking about like designing the thing. I should check with her one where she's. Uh, you know, for the character reference thing. Anyway, so, like, I think my mom has the same thing where she, she's always like, instead of telling people, like, this is what she wants, she actually, she's kind of manipulative, so she'll do something else. Because, so, like, codependents have this problem of asking people to meet their needs because they feel like they don't deserve it, they're not worthy enough. So, <clears throat> That was a very good insight for me because, like, I'm I'm, I'm like 37. I just, it's like all of this stuff. It's like it's so ingrained in you, like from your childhood, you, because you don't have any other way of looking at the world. You don't have a different reference point. This is what you thought the world was like. This is how you thought you were like. Uh, anyway, so yeah, I gotta go to the psychiatrist tomorrow. And I've got to deal with this ref like the second character reference. Like I said, you know, I'm not mentally well to work, but um, I just want to put the application in and just see what they say. And you know, even if I get the practicing certificate, that I, mean, I don't have to work um, it's just like because of my my degree is only valid for five years since I graduated otherwise I have to pay two hundred dollars for them to check if it's still valid or whatever so instead of doing all of that I, I thought I'll just uh, I mean worst thing that can happen is I go to jail <laughs> I should laugh it's not funny they're gonna send me to jail put me in the uh, general population of the man's prison and I'm gonna be I'm going to be completely destroyed. <sighs> no, but I don't know South Wales actually, that if you're transgender, they actually have a more uh, progressive laws. But it's so the worst thing. But I, you know, I've already told them this. They haven't really contacted the police, or so I don't think they're going to. I mean, this happened, but this was just. I mean, most of this stuff, like. I was with some people, you know, I actually, when I settled in Australia, I settled in a suburb that, it's called Mount Druitt, and uh, apparently this suburb is one of the most socially and economically disadvantaged suburbs in Australia, like on SBS television, which is like a local television um, station, 
but in a public television station, they made a video, uh, a TV show called Struggle Street. And there was a big controversy about this because the people, they were like, I don't call it. It was like, uh, there was this controversy because, the, you know, they did, the, the, those people who lived in Mount Rue didn't want the social stigma of being in Struggle Street. So I actually lived in this suburb, which is one of the most socially and economically disadvantaged. I didn't even know it. I lived there for a couple of years. And that's where, you know, people who grew up in that kind of a neighborhood, like some of the people, they're going to be like really messed up. And that's where I met some of these guys, uh, you know, after I, after I left school. And anyway, like, um, I have to actually talk about my friend. I think my, I, fall, I always get into relationships, like even friendships with these narcissistic type of people. I realize now who are just like, uh, anyway. Uh, so yeah, I mean, heroin addicts, I wasn't a heroin addict, but I was using it, and petty theft to support heroin addiction. There wasn't a lot, but I was, I was like with them on some time, on some occasions. Anyway, so, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's what I gotta do tomorrow. Um, uh, what else? Hmm. So yeah, I mean the the worst thing is going to prison, but I, I hope that's not gonna. Be, the best thing is like they say, okay, we we give you the certificate. What well, they could what they could also do is they could say the application is deferred. But you can reapply again within 12 months or whatever. I mean, they could, or they could, I don't know. They might give, I don't know. So there might be conditional approval. Or I think the conditional approval only happens for people who are like from um, you know, foreign jurisdictions and they want to practice here. So that, that's, for, that's for conditional approval. But anyway, so I'm just going to put it in. Uh, you know, just keep my options open. I'm not saying this is what I want to do, but I just want to, you know, uh, you know. one of the things I feel a little less depressed now is because I sent in that app, uh, disability application. I feel like that's taken a lot of pressure off of me because I was really stressed out about having to uh, go to that employment consultant. Because I realized, I realized now that she was actually quite, uh, ju you know, she was very judgmental of me and she was making me feel very defensive. And I don't think, so, like, now I can look back at those interactions and say, hey, that was actually a lot of nice interactions for me too. So that was kind of stressful. So I feel a little bit like, since I got the uh, exemption till August 12th, I feel a bit more relieved about that. But so, so I thought I'd send this application in because, you know, I worked so hard for it. You know, I did all the work experience. I don't really want to just throw it away. See, another thing is about me is like, my parents, whenever we were growing up, they weren't really like, if we achieved something, they'd be like, oh, you have to do better. So if we, so as a, as a kid, you never felt like you were good enough. <laughs> I mean, I, I could joke about it, but yeah, your parents, like, even if they did very well or something, they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, you gotta do better. They might have been happy that you did well, but they really didn't show it. And maybe I knew that they were happy or whatever, but I just felt like there wasn't much, uh, like support like oh you you matter yeah <laughs> so so even though uh, so as an adult even though i achieved things here and there you know personal achievements whatever i, I, I feel like oh whatever you know, this is going on to the next thing I, re I really don't tend to sit down and say hey this is a good, good thing you did you, you you overcame all of these personal struggles you know, you, you put yourself in difficult situations. That was a very courageous thing to do. And I tend to not appreciate that. I, I tend to not give myself a pat on the back because I just feel like, oh, whatever, this is just something you have to do. You have to do better. You know. <laughs> this isn't good enough. You're not good enough. Um, anyway, enough of a rant, I think. Uh, okay, I gotta take my medication now, which is water. Uh, 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 God, come inside.
Mm. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm working my way. I still have. I, I don't have any issues with the drinking and the smoking or whatever. But my main issue is the eating. Like I really have struggles with emotional eating because I still struggle with that. So. 